Hello, everyone. This is another episode of To Debate.net. And yes, and yes, I have a new microphone. It's actually not new. <laughs> you may hear it. my voice sounds better because I just got slapped on the wrist by my dear friend and co host of this podcast, Dick. And I'm not pronouncing Dick, Dirk. Dirk. I know I never pronounce your name correctly. I, I'm so bad because I'm usually very good at names and first names. And I always ask my team members who come from everywhere uh, to pronounce their name correctly so I can pronounce it. Um, and every time I ask them to correct me if I get it wrong. And your name, and I've known you for five years and I still do not pronounce your name correctly. It really annoys me. So one more thing on your list of stuff that annoys you when you're together with me. <laughs> What, what do you mean? What are the other things? I don't know. I'm sure you have a growing list somewhere. Uh, I actually do not have anything against your name in my little black book. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of names in there and a lot of bullet points against some people, but hmm. uh, against you, I don't have anything. And I cannot, I cannot really blame my toothache or my tooth aches, should I say, considering the number of issues I have in my mouth. Um, but you made, a, you made a poor dentist very happy today. Uh, I'm not sure the I'm, dentist was very poor, to be honest. But uh, yes, I well, guess they were happy. He was he was probably poorer before you came into his. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> with a number of issues, I, I had to get fixed, and it's still not over. And it's a she because I've had a, a male dentist many, many, many years ago as a teenager, and that was such a horrible experience. He made me feel really horrible because I was crying from pain. So he said. Something like boys don't cry or something like, or you're crying like a little girl. And I felt so offended. I never went back to him. So since then, I only choose dentists to be women. Uh, maybe it's completely wrong, but I assume they ha they're a little, a little bit more gentle. Uh, I think, uh, I, no. <laughs> I have, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, my, my dentist is a woman and uh, gentle is not, not uh, the word that, that comes to mind when she is fixing my teeth. So maybe. Listen, <laughs> since we're talking about stereotypes and I'm starting the, always the, the, the horrible stereotypes, let's not forget what nationality is your dentist? <laughs> what is wrong about being a German dentist? I'm not sure where you're leading to. <laughs> Let's just say Germany has a long tradition of uh, of being very being strong and just about no, the no, no, long tradition of being gentle and on time, but gentle first. Gently well, on let, time. Let's say you have a strong industry. You're not. You're known for the, your industry, right? For mechanical <laughs> stuff, right? So that's what I was leaning towards. So let's just say you have a mouth. You have tools. You just deal with it, right? <laughs> like a, it's so, a mechanical problem. It's not a human problem. So, so I'm where not, is nothing to do with decency here? Where, where is you know, your, Germans are perfectly decent human beings. I'm just saying when they have a problem, see where I'm getting at? They ah. just deal with it as if it's a like just an engineering issue sure. yeah so if uh germans are perfectly decent human beings why aren't they not all vegetarians i ask you now i don't know how you made that connection <laughs> <laughs> it's not very subtle at all but indeed the motion today is whether you can only be decent if you're vegetarian basically Dad, by the way you came up with that motion once again yeah, but uh, uh, you, you framed it wrong you framed it wrong i didn't say it, you can only be decent when you're vegetarian basically the way the other way around decent human beings have no alternative but to be vegetarians is the motion right correct but does it mean the same thing no <laughs> You, you can That's be you can be vegetarian and an asshole. Doesn't mean that you're a decent human being automatically. Oh, oh, got it, got it. <laughs> you're saying if A then B, and the reverse is not necessarily the, the case. Okay, exactly. get it, get it, get it. Let's oh, let's be structured and mathematical, which is perfectly fine by me. By you, the way, you're again making fun of me and my being German. What what nationality? Not what what nationality is your dentist? Let's not talk about that. She is Swiss, isn't she? Uh, most Swiss are actually not from... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, A German she's... dentist, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say uh, I, I, I choose my doctors. Maybe that's actually another debate. Um, I'm, and this may be subject to another debate but, or a sub-debate. I know I'm getting I'm, get, I'm getting very convoluted here, but I I make the choice of going with the public sector because I have a problem with private sector or doctors who do not apply the 
um, the government fees or the government of, or the state f- medical fees. I, I don't know what's the term in English or it depends by country. Because I feel that it's, I, I would have a problem going to a doctor where their primary motive or their one of their motives is money. Mm. Uh, if you're optimizing for a business and for money, then I, I struggle with that. I'm worried I'm not going to get the, the best of care. It's maybe completely subjective because you could argue, well, if you're in the public sector or public sector fees, then you have maybe to do even more volume to compensate, right? I don't know, right? You, you could go either way, but... I try to usually to find doctors which practice the public sector fees if they're in the private sector or just the public sector, so the hospital. Uh, but again, the sub-debate here, which I was thinking in my head ahead of what I was saying was, that's easy for me to say when you live in Western Europe or in Europe in general. Uh, I did have an accident five, four years ago on a scooter in Cambodia. And I made the mistake of going to the public hospital because I didn't think of anything else actually. And I came out in probably the same or worse condition out, out of the hospital than when I came in. Uh, no, like all my, my, my wounds were not cleaned, nothing, like nothing was given to me. And the X-ray machine was locked up in the, with a key. So they had to find the key in the hospital so I could get an X-ray of my wrist because I had damaged my wrist. Um, interesting experience. Okay. So it's easy for me to go with the public sector, but that assumes you have a public sector which works in and- comparison to most of the rest of the planet. I have friends in Great Britain that wouldn't just uh, do the public sector NHS type uh, treatment either. So I'm not sure if that is even universally true across countries yeah, in the rich it, it's world. True. Yeah, yeah, it's what I'm reading also in the news indeed about the NHS. But um, So that's why I'm reacting about this aspect of, of Swiss dentists or doctors. When I can, I actually choose to go back to France, for instance, because I had a doctor there or a dentist uh, before I moved to Switzerland 10 years ago. So I'd, I'd rather go with people I know, especially with a dentist. Like, I don't know how they, you know, they use their little tools and their drilling machines and um, scalpel and uh, uh, lovely yucky. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, have the I get immediately to- toothache when you, when you start talking about this. Anyway, um, so... Can we move on now from the dentist topic? Because I, it really, it Absolutely, really because, I feel, I, mean, I feel with you, and I, I'm glad that you still laugh and joke with me. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to laugh that much though, because I have to go back to it. And uh, but actually, I'm, I think I think the debate is closed. We don't have to debate much today, since we both agree that you know you can only be vegetarian to be a decent human being. Uh, and again, I, I'm making the mistake on purpose. Yeah, I, to annoy you. I think you're, you're putting also words in my mouth, which is not a mistake. It's your tactic. You, you prime our listeners to you to your motion, to your side not of the motion. Uh, you're in control of the audio editing, so. But I'm a decent human being, which means I leave all the strong arguments and your tactics in. Also, I like to expose your your cheap tactics to our <laughs> listeners who are smart enough to figure this out. Now, I have to say, uh, I haven't, I've used, have not used it much, but you gave me a, a very nice gift a few months ago, which was this playing deck of cards, which lists all the fallacies, and you have just next to you, yeah. And uh, anyway, we should maybe do this like more often, or use the the. the Deck of cards more often. And so like a, a can slippery slope fallacy. <laughs> Here you go. Take this. <laughs> or we try to burn through it in one show. Like the bandwagon, the genetic fallacy, the no true Scotsman. Yeah, we should do that. Amen. Yeah. All right. So the motion today is decent human beings have no alternative but to be vegetarians. And as usual, we flipped a virtual coin. Uh, I say as usual, but actually a few times I used a physical coin, but this time it was, a, again, the virtual coin. And the result was that I would be for that motion and you'll be against and that you'll start our debate. So whenever you're ready, you've got your two minutes as usual, and then it will be my two minutes and then three minutes for the rebuttal. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first. And argues against the motion. On behalf of all decent human beings who are not vegetarians, let me tell you, it is okay. Yes, you can be a decent human being and be somebody who likes to eat a steak every once in a while or 
has a sausage when you're well we germans have a stereotype saying that we eat sausage all the time and i can assure you there are plenty of decent human beings in germany even though plenty of them eat meat or beef on a regular basis why so because it's a complicated concept there are more than one element to being a decent human being and uh, let me admit something. I have moments when I'm torn. Some days I seriously consider becoming a vegetarian or even better, a vegan myself because it pains me how we treat animals and how badly industrialized food production hurts our planet. You will hear all about it in Sebastian's piece in two minutes when he tells you he's going to stick to his piece and he's going to give me no matter what I said. I'm sure about that. But here's the thing. No one says this is the only way how to produce and consume food. We can bring up chickens, cows and pigs in environments that are healthy and positive for them, even though that we have to overcome that moral piece in there, that almost philosophical question, if it is okay to kill animals in the end, but we can make the life they have as positive as possible with the end not to damage the planet as we do right now and not to just consume animals, but show some respect. And whenever you make a consumption decision that tries to have that respect baked into, when you go and you, you are thoughtful about what meat and beef you buy, where it was produced, how it died, whenever you do that, then let me tell you, you are a decent human being, even though you're not a vegetarian. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a vegetarian myself, but I'm getting there slowly. And I think part of the reason I'm not yet is psychological. I've been raised to be a meat eater or uh, do you say omnivore uh, in, in English, like eating a bit of everything. Uh, I thought that was the way we were, we were designed and I realized it's not the case. Uh, and the second reason I think is because it's not yet available as such in supermarkets to evolve from a meat consumer to a fully vegetarian consumer. Let me be very specific. It's been possible for a while to safely produce and eat lab-produced meat, for instance. I've not seen it in a supermarket, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe I don't shop enough. So there's really no reason to not become vegetarian in principle when eating animal meat is indeed extremely disrespectful for the environment, among other things I'm going to get into. Uh, I discovered only recently, to be honest, that the meat industry is the most polluting of all industries, more so than any other industry. To produce one kilogram of beef, and I know it's statistics and it's boring, but I did not even know this, uh, I shamefully admit, one kilo of beef, of beef, you need 20,000 liters of water. You need, for one kilo of meat, you need 10 kilograms of plant proteins, which you could have used instead to feed people instead of fattening animals. All these things I actually didn't realize. It was so intensive. Animals grazing, likewise, when they graze the grass, uh, contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, destroys the nature. They actually trample on plants. So there's an environmental damage, which is uh, obvious in this case, because we're talking about millions of animals that we slaughter. We're talking about decency here. We're animals ourselves, and we kill millions of animals to feed ourselves when we actually don't have to. So this is the decency we're talking about, the respect of other living organisms, which in turns out do have emotions. They do have a conscience for the most part, if not all of them. And this is also, by the way, something new. When I was a teenager, I didn't think crabs, for instance, uh, you may laugh about it, but I didn't think they had a conscience. So I justified me kicking them in the sand, didn't do this all the time, but once in a while, because I said I didn't have a conscience. To my despair, a few years ago, I read an article showing that crabs, even crabs, have a conscience. I'll go in more detail with other things and how shocking uh, we kill animals uh, still today and why, indeed, we don't have a choice but to be vegetarian. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. So here we agree, by the way, we produce two much meat and beef and we consume too much meat and beef if you have animals out there by the literally millions let alone those on grass and on flowers that they trample down those are the lucky ones if if you have them out by the millions the kind of industrialized space that you need the kind of processes that you need just become well, the bird that I comes to mind is inhuman, but of course it's not inhuman. It's just, as you said, a question of decency how we treat animals. 
So we agree in that. I have no disputing of this. And industrialized uh, beef production, meat production is the worst. The, it contributes to pollution, everything. That's not the only way how you can produce meat and beef. And that's not the only way how you can make your consumption decision. So I cut back or I have cut back on eating meat and beef significantly. Actually, the healthy dose of eating meat and beef is about one or two times a week. And I try to get to that place. And yes, if there is lab-produced meat and beef available that just tastes the same or has the same properties, I'm the first one to completely uh, focus on this uh, as far as my meat consumption goes. Now, you said a few things. You said, for instance, it's perfectly okay to completely remove beef and meat from your diet and it's healthy. Actually, it's not that clear. There have been plenty of studies, some of them just released recently, some of them done by a big university in Switzerland, that seem to show that pure vegetarians have higher cancer rates and higher heart attack rates than, than people with a mixed diet have. The reason for that, as believed, is uh, some micronutritions that are uh, thought to be found only in meat and beef, because we are, in fact, omnivores. Now, in our modern society, we can replace a lot of the pieces that are missing with others and we are lucky that we can ship uh, fresh fruits and vegetables all across the globe to have them in our supermarkets that's not an alternative for everyone and again this is not a marker of decency it's a marker of having a choice i i would argue if you cut back on meat and beef and if you make sure that those animals have been treated positively and lived a positive life in conditions that are animal worthy and have not suffered in the end then you can be a decent human being still eating occasionally um, beef and meat and be fine with that and this is exactly my stance. By the way, on the statistic that you brought, the 20,000 liters of water, well, they are they are back in the environment then and can be brought back. It's not that this water is gone just because animal ha um, drank them. So that statistic is kind of, well, unhelpful in our case. Overall, I maintain you can be a decent human being and eat meat and beef, but you have to think about it and you certainly shouldn't aim for the cheapest option in the supermarket and you should not eat beef and meat all the time but be more thoughtful about it next up sebastian so actually i had not mentioned just yet the health aspect and i think this is where there's also this air of decency and respect not just towards animals but towards ourselves as human beings. And indeed, there is controversy around the actual health benefits and trying to find a good balance in your diet. So I would not recommend anything here because I'm not a doctor. It does seem there's a good number of health benefits, maybe not all of them, and there's controversy on others. Uh, but it's not just cancer. There's also the weight aspect. And it's this is a, a key issue in the world today when I think a third of the world population is obese or overweight. So I think there's, there's additional things here. I'm not going to extend my, my speech too much on this aspect, though. And there's also this maybe def definition which we haven't clarified exactly. I'm not a, an expert on this either, but you know whether you include fish or not as part of the substream of being a vegetarian, in which case I think you actually have the, the additional proteins that you may be missing from meat. But I'm, again, not an expert on this. I want to go back on the aspect of killing um, because I think this is the crucial point because you talk about the distinction of numbers. You say, well, you know, there's ways of maybe consuming less. You're recommending this. And you're saying maybe there's a way of killing animals in a more humane way. Now, here's the thing. It's not because we actually may have uh, those methods, which I would uh, disagree with, that we actually implemented that way. And that's the problem with us human beings, right? We may pass legislation. And the problem is we don't always respect it, especially when it comes to slaughterhouses. How often do we read in the news? And I'm not particularly interested in those news, but it, I do come across it once in a while, including in countries like France, where regularly slaughterhouses are being condemned because some employees are shocked with the way animals are slaughtered in improper ways against legislation. So we still kill them in shocking ways. We disregard the legislation, and even legislation is not that protective of, of animals. In fact, uh, I think it was just last week, and it may sound funny uh, said that way, but 
same thing. You have sheep and cows actually managing to escape slaughterhouses they, at the last minute. So they, they, they don't know what's going on. They feel the stress, possibly, uh, because of other animals, and they feel that they need to escape, right? It's like this fight-or-flight response. And I think this gives, you, gives us an indication of how profoundly cruel it is to slaughter our brother animals. And again, we may disagree. Maybe you know, some of us don't consider animals to the same level as human beings. And this is the case I'm trying to make here, where I was shocked to discover just a, f- a decade or two ago that indeed animals or most animals or living organisms have some kind of emotion or conscience or other kind of senses that we may not even understand to ourselves because we have five or six senses as human beings and there could be other senses out there. So I think this is a this is not a, an easy topic to talk about. And raising animals, by the way, in confinement is also cruel. So you may you may say and you may wish for non-confinement and not having them in cages, but the reality is it's not going to happen otherwise. Because it's, and this is back to another debate of ours, is it, this is the way capitalism is running, right? You need to grow or have more and more animals. You need to make more money. You need to grow as an estate. And otherwise, you're not surviving because prices go down. Food, food, the food prices have gone down over the past decades. It's cheaper and cheaper. And there's a reason for that because we produce so much also. So overall, I think it's it's an equation we cannot solve. There's, it's not just by reducing or wishing of this nice wish that us in rich countries can reduce our consumption that we will so, solve this problem. So if we're decent and we really want to respect our brother animals, we really have to be vegetarian. Final statements. Dirk goes first. Yeah, the interesting thing you said yourself a couple of years ago, we didn't even consider certain animals to have a consciousness, and now we changed our mind. What about plants? You're so sure about plants not having any consciousness? I'm just saying this, not because I think plants have consciousness, just to call you out on something, that you make a distinction based on the assumed consciousness or lack thereof. And I would argue this cannot be the measurement based on which you base your decision. Then the other thing, slaughterhouses. Yeah, they are cruel. I'm making a case for lot, a lot less beef and meat consumption. And uh, here in Germany, there is a new movement where we're basically the the what is the term? The butcher, where the butcher is coming to your animal to kill it on the farm instead of the animal being shipped to a slaughterhouse. And there are ways to make this killing, let's say, less painful and less scary for the animal. Now, for me as a consumer, that just simply means I have to pay more money. And I agree, capitalism is not helping here. People usually don't want to spend more money, but I am. And that means that I, who is thinking about this and trying to make a conscious decision and support those who treat animals fairly and decently, that I'm also at least, I can claim at least some level of decency here. And I would argue, no, just because you're vegetarian, you're not a decent human being, nor do you lack the decency if you still eat meat. Sebastian. These are are absolutely fair points. However, there's two areas in conclusion that I want to come back to. One area is I'd be totally fine to eat meat if we were back in the hunter-gatherer mode, right? i.e. you kill with your spear and arrow or your bow and arrow, and you eat just for yourself, right? You feed yourself and your family, i.e. the, op- the opposite of the industrial era we're in, right? where we're uh, raising bil- millions and millions of cattle everywhere. And this is the, pr- the second problem is you skirt around the issue of killing. You say less painful, but you don't actually describe the, the killing methods. And I don't want to be very gory in the details because I actually don't know the details myself very well. Uh, but I think anyone would be shocked to actually see an animal being killed, even if it's less painful and and done in as humane way as possible. I think there's nothing humane about killing another living organism, especially when we're talking about mammals or animals, which are very, very, or very similar to us in many ways. Like the heart of a pig apparently is very close to the heart of a human being. With plants, it's something maybe more more far farther apart. Uh, but I'll leave that to our discussion after this debate. So I think if you're decent and coherent with who you are as a human being, you have to become vegetarian. And I should be the first one to do that, but I'm not there yet. All right. That was it. Our debate. 
decent human beings have no alternative but to be vegetarians. So basically, what? that that goes to show that we are human as human beings can be quite schizophrenic, right? So we can be torn between things we want to be and things we are and things we say we believe and things we do. The the positive, I think, the positive thing here, at least for us, about what saves us, I want I want to believe, is that we're on that trend. I I certainly think I'm eating less meat than I used to. Also, from a health perspective, I, I, I eat everything. I like everything. So, and I tend to prefer to opt for fish when I can go for fish rather than meat. Uh, hoping or thinking that it's actually better for me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. But in general, I'm much more comfortable now to actually eat no fish or no meat at a given meal. And something which would have been a heresy when I was growing up. For me, I was raised with a concept, and I don't know if it was explicit or implicit, that at every meal, if you could, if you can afford it, because if our listeners come from poor countries, it may not be that obvious, but I was raised with the belief that every meal had to have either meat or fish. Yeah, same here, same here. So like veg vegetables were a have, side. Yeah, yeah vegetables on the side, right? Yeah. There was like vegetables, or even like the perfect dish would be meat or fish, uh, carbohydrate, so potato, pasta, or rice, and then vegetables. For me, yes. that's the, the perfect traditional French dish, and I'm I'm used to that. By the way, when I go to the US, for instance, I struggle like in cafeterias at the at Google or in other places when I don't have this classic Mediter Mediterranean or European like tri trio of uh, of food. I'm actually a bit confused. I actually get lost a bit. You know, I, I don't say I, I'm struggle. I struggle with pizza, but. Uh, <laughs> Let's say Indian dishes or Mexican dishes yeah. do not have this, uh, for me, this balance, which is maybe not balanced, by the way, from a diet perspective. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same thing, uh, in the same boat. I, I like to default to vegetables and fruits a lot, uh, just as you described. For instance, in the morning, there would be a choice of uh, sausage rolls, ham, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be part of the, the breakfast. Right now, as a, as an adult, uh, in our breakfasts, actually neither ham nor sausage rolls play any role. We have we have uh, jam, we have honey, we have other things on the plate. And the same, uh, what I said earlier is really what I believe. Um, so I try to have several days a week no meat whatsoever and the fact of the matter is by doing that alone compared to the typical diet that most people still follow of having at least one menu um, one meal a day with with some form of beef or meat um, if you compare it to that then just reducing a couple of days your meat consumption is good for the planet it's like immediately and it's capitalism in action if enough people do that then when i go to buy stuff and that's where the privilege comes in right when i go shopping for the family i try to buy the expensive meat i try to know where things are coming from them i look for certain signs on the packaging and everything so i try to steer things in a better way without avoiding it altogether. Because the, the other thing is, I uh, I like the taste. Certain certain menus are really, really good. As I said, I'm not necessarily buying into that, oh, it's conscious, so we are not allowed to kill it argument. Although that is literally something that I wrestle with, where I think like if, if it comes down to the moral argument, I have nothing that goes for it other than, yeah, we are treating ourselves better than animals in pretty much all other aspects as well. So it's like... A, this is a fundamental struggle I'm in, where I very feel like this is, this is like um, there are several areas in the world where where we are in that struggle, and this is one for me where I don't feel I have a, a good stance for myself, but I always end up eating meat at some point, and uh, I'm not beating myself up for it because I I do also believe I'm a decent human being, <laughs> it's, um, trying to do the right thing at least in most part of his life. Similarly, I'm closing my eyes, right? I'm, I'm aware and conscious of that issue of killing animals. It, but I, I do hope that by, by rewiring my brain about my, as we discussed, about the upbringing in terms of the, the way we eat, that's already one thing. I think that's one positive trend. The other one is, I have to, be, to admit, it's also for very, very specific, very mundane reasons. It's like if meat doesn't look good when let's say I go to a cafeteria where I can see the meat exposed and I don't like the the look of, of it. I no longer feel obliged to take it nonetheless, right? Because of of having rewired my brain and saying, well, you know what? Tough luck. I don't like the look of it. 
I don't feel I'm going to enjoy it. I'm, I might as well just skip meat and tidy for that for that for that meal. So it's maybe from the wrong reasons, but hopefully it comes down to the same conclusion, which is well, you know what? It's more healthy. It's better for the environment、mm-hmm. and better for the animals. Indeed, to go all the way to actually not eating meat, I think will probably come from this lab-produced meat.、Yeah. If indeed there's no distinction in taste, in uh, uh, health, a、uh, diet quality, and in price, because I believe it's, I understand it's still more pricey now than the than,、yeah, uh, than actual meat.、Um, but that, that although I don't know if you look at the environmental cost, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, part of that will go away with、uh, again capitalism, right? So some of these things will just fade away. If enough people start eating the lab-produced meat, then prices go down, and some of it is actually not even meat. So I I, I have a place nearby where I often go for 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 grabbing some lunch, and、uh, they introduced a veggie burger two weeks ago, and that veggie burger has.、Um, Um, like、um, I don't know, len- a lens-based patty in it,、mm-hmm. and I swear it looks like meat. It tastes like meat. I even I, I I would even say I had burgers with real meat that weren't as tasty as this one, <laughs> and I'm I'm completely addicted to this thing. So if you if you serve me something like this, then I'm happy to replace my diet with it. And the other thing is. Um, and that definitely changed, and that's something I advertise in my family as well. I try to be respectful of the animal I'm eating. What that means is I try to to not buy even a little piece more than we can actually eat. And we are never ever throwing away any any piece of、uh, beef that we have in the fridge. We find a way to prepare it and eat it if it's bare. It's it's not spoiled or anything, but. Um, we, there are so many. There are many goods thrown away on a regular basis, and we try to make extra sure that we are aware of the food we are eating, and we are treating that with a level of respect,、um, and、um, not buying more than we actually can consume and want to consume, and cut back on the consumption at the same time. I think when when the industry will realize, which is, I would be I would be very surprised if it's not the case, but when the industry realizes that it's cheaper to produce lab. Lab-produced meat tastes the same way. Yeah, we'll just we'll just all become vegetarian, or,、yes. or maybe it's not. It won't be vegetarian. The 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 regular definition because if you're still eating meat, but it's just lab-produced, you probably you may still have the same health concerns. By the way, right in terms of when you eat meat, it's just we're not killing animals anymore. Yeah, I mean you can but, be a vegetarian and eat pom frites the whole day, and I want to or pizza enough, pizza margarita, and then then I want to see you in a couple of、uh, of months. But I, I, th- I, I'm, I would, I would be very surprised if it doesn't become cheaper than producing the cattle meat. To be honest,、yeah. like in the in the next few years, like less than a decade, I think just mechanically, just the, the sheer laws of, of profit will make it so that it's going to be much more interesting to produce things on a on a tube. <laughs> On a and, test tube or whatever. And to your point, right? So there are a lot of costs that we are not accounting for right now. So the the industrialized food production is the single largest contributor to、um, greenhouse gases right now. And if we would properly tax this, then lab produced meat would be、uh, look a lot and、uh, would look a lot more interesting and、uh, overnight, basically. So、uh, yeah, I I do I do agree, and and、uh, the techniques will get better and better, and the replacements I I follow that market for a while now. So、uh, I, for here in Germany, maybe three four years ago,、um, these these、uh, vegetarian replacement products started showing up in the supermarkets, and we started buying them. And I have to admit, in the beginning, they were. There were some that tasted okay, but none of them tasted like the real deal, and some of them were just not really, not really the kind of food that you wanted to eat. But they improved significantly up to the point that the other day I I bought a couple of vegetarian sausages, and my kids that are normally super skeptical came and said, "This is really, really very good. This is like,、uh, oh, you can buy those more often." And、uh, yeah, they they enjoyed them really, and they said it tastes like the real deal. So we're getting closer to this, and the closer we get, the more often I buy it. So I I buy these things a lot these days, and it gets only better. And the moment where we have a fully synthesized steak,、um, I'm all vegetarian. 
the I, I, so here in our discussion, we're we're again I think skirting mostly around this issue of uh, of decency. And I said something earlier, and I I have to admit it because I think it's it's shame actually out of shame that I have to admit it. Um, but I'm closing my eyes right to the cruelty that comes into killing another living entity. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. You talk about plants, but I was indeed referring to the mammals or to the to the actual animals, uh, which in ve- in many ways look like us, right? like they have ears and noses and eyes and emotions it, and conscience. It, this is an interesting question, right? Um, a lot of people said what you said earlier. Oh, I try to eat more fish, or they eat some sea life, or whatnot. It's really hard to make that distinction. So we, we agree, there, there, there is the question of what is the dimension you make make the difference? Is it the consciousness? Is it how much of a mammal it is? So basically every non-mammal is okay? Or is it how much we like it? So the, the less we like it, the, the better it is to kill it and eat it? Or it's, is it it's fair. So I, I don't know how to make that. I, I would explain the same thing to the, to the fish area, to be, to be honest. Like if, if there is indeed, I mean, for, for my own case, if if I want to be not blind to the cruelty we inflict on uh, on a sentient being, then it's indeed any kind of entity which has a conscience. Well, you know, up to certain limits. You know, if we can't eat plants, we're not going to eat anything anymore, right? If we're not eating nuts and fruits, uh, which I suspect do not have any uh, thing living anymore, actually. So hopefully, I don't know. Let's just eat fruits and so- Coca Cola. And, and McDonald's, obviously. There that's are, there not, are, that's yeah. not meat. There are people that that's promote meat. There are people that promote eating fruits, indeed, for that reason. Like, oh, it's fallen off the tree, so you're not just... Uh, <laughs> it, it's rotting anyway if you just leave it so you can eat it. But uh, the, the thing is, I would say, let's start by not being cruel. So a lot of the animals, you pointed that out rightly, a lot of the animals go through hell before we p- make them food. And... This is, and if there is an argument um, saying if you're a decent human being, um, you should consider being vegetarian, this is the argument. And I try to get around this by saying, yeah, well, I spend my money where my mouth is by investing in food where the producer tried to prove to me that they were not cruel, that they made everything that's possible to make it uh, a better process. But in reality, I don't know that much about it. I try to follow the the signals that I see. And if you want to be extra sure, then then probably, yeah, then yeah, then you shouldn't eat it at all or kill it yourself, basically, which no one wants to do. Um, or go to the local producer, like uh, the, find the local um, organic produce farm where the where you know the guy doing it and basically the guy vouches to you um, to describe how the animal is killed. That may be also an option. But yeah, um, if... if the oh i kill a uh, uh, um, an animal a brother animal as you called it if that is the the line not to cross then yeah do you, do you have you heard of that religion which i think is mostly in india it's uh, it's not a very big religion but it's been around for a few centuries i believe uh, jains do you know jains Mm-mm. jain Mm-mm. so actually so they have a few temples temples in india uh, the first time i visited india uh, almost 10 years ago in Rajasthan you have a number of these t- temples and what's interesting is that the worshippers uh, uh, have a cloth over their mouth because mm-hmm. they worry that they're going to ingest a fly or a mosquito or a tiny insect so they're very very careful even to respect flies and uh, insects yeah it's a logical consequence of uh, when you believe in reincarnation right you could you could just accidentally swallow your grandma <laughs> therefore, you therefore you better have something that protects you from doing that. I, I don't know if it's just reincarnation. It's possible. I forgot when I read about it. It, it could also be just the respect of other living organisms in this case, or I don't I don't know. I can't remember exactly. But indeed, if you're eating your grandma just by breathing, <laughs> then that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Not the same to happen to you when you're reincarnated. What, what, what would you be reincarnated into if you had a choice? Me. If, oh, yeah. I want to, uh, what I want to. I think cats are pretty cool and cats are pretty safe. No one eats cats normally. So and easy. Do they have you seven or nine lives? If you, How many yeah, lives you, do they have? Seven? <laughs> that's too easy. You get seven lives by reincarnating into a cat. Yeah, that's so cool. And I mean, you can you can treat your human as uh, if it's uh, if the human is your servant. And uh, 
you get you get well fed, um, padded. So yeah, fairly cat, independent. Cat cats are pretty independent. Yeah, if you're an asshole, then people even even think of it as independence as well. So it's <laughs> pretty good, pretty good uh, animal, I would say. Do you, do you have a cat? No, but I'm a cat person. But sadly, the rest of my family is not. The rest of my family is a dog person, and I am not. So we are stalling oh. here, and so we have no no pets at all. I see, I see. Okay. All right. It, we're wrapping up. Thanks for this debate. Uh, quite interesting. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask you, what led you to want to debate it? Just very briefly. What made you want to talk about this? Oh, I don't recall. I try to come okay. up with motions. I don't always... Uh... <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just curious what goes into your mind. All right, never mind. That's fine. Um, I hope you enjoyed, you listeners, our little debate and our long discussion. Uh, remember to vote on todebate.eu and remember to come back next week for another episode of To Debate. Thank you very much and stay tuned. Thank you. Bye. I mean, it's just one one retreat of Donald J. Trump, and we are famous. Imagine he listens to one of our debates, and then he's doing one of the uh, his tweets. Like, I listen to these idiots from Two Debate, and I like to say, <laughs> we, we should probably you should probably tweet something at the real Donald Trump, and see if he answers. Yes, <laughs> he will probably answer. By the way. Yeah, that would be really cool. We just need to make sure that we actually have a link to our debate and that our server is well well, um, <laughs> well set up to handle the load. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not sure he would listen to the podcast, but himself, because I, if it's not on Fox News, I guess it would not be I, I, I mean, heard by him. Hey, for me, it's okay if he answers or retweets. He doesn't. Oh, that, you're not okay that, with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. He does. He does not need to listen to our podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should tweet the link to. Uh, it's worth having uh, having a Trump to to him and see what happens. Uh, or or should we ban uh, Trump from Twitter? Yeah. Or also. how about uh, preemptively strike North Korea? I mean. <laughs> Well, pretty much half of the debates we've had, right? <laughs>